logos, the symbols for brand names. They are everywhere, on our streets, in our magazines, on TV, and even on ourselves. But what are brands, and what impacts do they have on our world? Economic and social theorist Naomi Klein has dedicated the last four years of her life to answering this question. She has written for many publications, including Saturday Night Magazine and the Toronto Star. Advertising is a form of branding, but branding is a much more ambitious project than simply buying a billboard or uh, a commercial on television. She is often asked to take part in panel discussions for schools, festivals, and broadcast media. To fully explain her theories, she has written the book No Logo. It is an objective and in-depth examination of branding. The idea of branding um, came about during the Industrial Revolution. Branding was a process of, uh, of trying to create distinction and individuality within the context of manufactured sameness. So you have these identical products coming out through the line and you have to say, well, this, this product is going to stand out because it's got Aunt Jemima's name on it or the Quaker Oats guy's name is on it. But the idea behind branding has now changed. It is about, what, what, about you, not about the brand being of good quality, but you being of good quality because you buy that brand. Brands are now sold as a lifestyle, a look, a culture. You do not just buy Nike sneakers, you buy into the entire Nike philosophy. Each brand tries to represent a different idea. For example, sport, fashion, multiculturalism, Canadiana, community. Starbucks chose the idea of community, the idea of the third place, public space, a place to congregate. But of course, these are, these are private spaces. They're pseudo-public spaces. But when you have a private space, um, you can, you, you're allowed to protect all kinds of trademarks, you're allowed to restrict speech in all kinds of ways. It's like the way I can control the environment in my own house. That's what a mall is, that's what a superstore is. So these claims about Barnes & Noble or chapters being a library are totally false. And that's not to say that they're not great places to shop, um, but when we start looking at the effects that they're having on our genuine libraries, on our schools, um, then, then, then that's when you see the real effect. Large franchise bookstores have taken away attention from the importance of supporting our public libraries. Public space is also lost to corporate sponsorship of events. Naomi uses the example of university students who are banned from distributing anti-smoking material on their campus. York University, which, sponsor, which, is, which has the Des Moines Tennis Open, is a public university, but students who were handing out pamphlets were thrown, out, thrown off their own campus because it had been branded. Because private and public space are not the same thing. Super brands limit free expression in other ways as well. Large chain stores have the power to censor what we can read, watch, and listen to. But when you have a company like Barnes & Noble or a company like Walmart where they have such an enormous market share, when they make the seemingly innocuous decision of, you know what, I don't like the cover of that magazine, or you know what, I think the, the lyrics on this rap, on this, uh, rap album are, are, are too explicit, um, that's, just not, that's not, just not a casual decision. What actually happens is that the labels uh, and publishers, um, movie producers, in the case of Blockbuster, uh, decide, based on that decision, what kind of movies they're going to make, what kind of albums they'll produce. Because marketing a brand is so expensive, many brand-oriented corporations choose to hire cheap contract labor companies. The large majority of these manufacturing companies work out of specially regulated areas of developing countries, referred to as export processing zones. Naomi has spoken to the workers in these areas. And the only way that I can describe them is they're, they're basically work camps. You often hear stories about people sleeping under their sewing machines. You hear about three overnight shifts in a row, workers dying of exhaustion. I mean, they're just horrible, horrible stories. Around the world, people are starting to organize and protest against brand-based corporations. So what I see is an, an international kind of brand-based movement emerging, um, where what we're really talking about is the global economy and the fact that it's totally disengaged from human rights and, and environmental justice and labor standards are dropping. Many of the people involved in the movement are students. The reason why young people are at the forefront of this movement is 
because young people are the ones who have been most affected by branding and are in fact most branded. Um, so it's just about looking down and seeing the logo on your t-shirt and going like, oh my god, okay, so this is not abstract, this is very, very personal. And when people learn about these issues, it, they, have this, they have a very personal connection to them because of their role as consumers. Naomi Klein is, in a small way, changing the world with her writing. With her book No Logo, Naomi hopes not only to raise public awareness of the inhumane nature of big brands, but to also help people take action. To me, the biggest compliment is to have you know, my writing photocopied and, and fired around on the internet and reposted and used to be a tool, to be useful. And, and, and I hope that, 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 that is my, that's my wish for the book, that it's useful. Apple A.